Hello, welcome back. In the last video, we looked at the topic of sex determination, and if you remember, we looked at how genes were transmitted by male and female parents to their offspring, and we discovered a difference in how males and females transmitted the X sex chromosome. At the end of that video, I said we would explore the implications of these genetic differences. So in this video, we shall learn how the differences in gene transmission might contribute to different trait distributions between the sexes. So let's begin. If you recall, in the last video we performed a mind experiment in which we imagined a medical scanner with which we could image the brain so all the cells with an X chromosome from the father displayed as blue on the screen and that all the cells with an X chromosome from the mother displayed as pink. When we look at the male brain, we discovered it was monochromatic, or entirely one colour, pink. This was because all the chromosomes for males are inherited from the mother. Female brains, we discovered, display a mosaic of two colours, with patches of pink and blue showing up throughout the brain. This difference in how males and females inherit the X chromosome and therefore X-linked genes, might offer a plausible genetic explanation for greater male variability across traits. This variability within the male population means that there can be a sex difference between men and women on a trait even when their group averages are the same. Let's look at a typical trait distribution. When we look at the graph for the distribution of height between male and female populations, we see that the male group average height in the US is about 69 inches. This is substantially taller than the female average height of about 64 inches. This difference between the male and female adult populations is an easily determined example of dimorphism. When we look at the distribution curves, we notice that the averages are not aligned. There is a separation of average heights between the two groups. But there is another type of distribution that is of interest, and that is the within-sex variability. To see what this means, we can look at a different trait such as IQ, where the average between populations is aligned, but there is more variability within the male population. So let's see what that looks like when we graph it. When we look at this graph, we can see that although the means are about equal, there are more females than males within the mean, and the male population has a wider distribution on the graph. This indicates greater variability for this trait. There are more males at the tails of the distribution. Feminists often focus on the high end of the distribution, but hardly ever consider the fact that there are more males represented at the lower end of the distribution. Larry Summers, who was president of Harvard University, described this greater variability between the two populations in a now infamous speech, which he delivered in January 2005, and I quote, It does appear that on many, many different human attributes, height, weight, propensity for criminality, overall IQ, mathematical ability, scientific ability, there is relatively clear evidence that whatever the difference in means, which can be debated, there is a difference in the standard deviation and variability of a male and female population. We can paraphrase his statement thus. You can argue about the averages, but the shape of the graphs is consistent. There is simply more variability within the male population across traits. After having the temerity to utter this simple observation, Larry Summers became the focus of outrage and the centre of controversy. Eventually, he resigned his position. If it is simply a fact that males are generally more variable than females on many traits, why is this true and what has this to do with the mechanism involved in genetic inheritance? The subtle differences in how genes are transmitted from parents to children provide us with a plausible explanation for this variation. Remember that males inherit the X chromosome from a single parent, the mother, while the female inherits from both parents, resulting in a genetic mosaic, which we observed in our imaginary scanner. An X-linked gene inherited from the mother that coded for an extreme trait, either high or low, might be moderated in a female by an alternative gene inherited from the father that has a less extreme effect. However, a male who inherited an X-linked gene that coded for an extreme trait 
would have the same gene in all of his cells because he doesn't have a second X chromosome and thus there would be no moderating effect. If the genes that code for extreme traits are X-linked, males would inherit these only from their mothers. They would not be moderated by non-extreme X-linked gene from the father. On the other hand, females who inherit an extreme trait from one parent might have the effects of that gene moderated by the non-extreme gene from the other parent. That is, extreme traits that are X-linked are effectively averaged in females. It seems reasonable to me to speculate that if one moderates the tendency towards extreme traits in any population, then the average in its distribution necessarily increases and variability reduced. This genetic averaging might account for the distinct difference we observe in the trait distributions between populations. Steven Pinker offers an intriguing evolutionary explanation of how such a mechanism might arise, and I quote, Since a male can have more offspring than a female, but also has a greater chance of being childless, natural selection favours a slightly more conservative and reliable baby-building process for females, and a slightly more ambitious and error-prone process for males. In summary then, biological sex in humans is determined genetically at the time of conception, not assigned by a clinician at birth. At the time of conception, a chromosome from the sperm cell, either X or Y, fuses with the X chromosome in the zygote, determining whether the child will be genetically or chromosomally female XX or male XY. The Y chromosome is essential for development of the male reproductive organs, and with no Y chromosome, an embryo will develop into a female. This is because of the presence of the sex-determining region of the Y chromosome, also known as the SRY gene. Nevertheless, as already pointed out in the comment section by Gary Edwards, even the sex dichotomous differences are not absolute in the human population. There are individuals who are exceptions. It is these exceptions that are the cause of much heated debate and controversy, and this will be the topic of the next video in the series. We end our adventure at this point. I hope you found something of interest in this video. If you would like to support my channel, I now have a Patreon page. If you're unable to support my work through Patreon, then you can share, like, or comment. It's all good. Thank you for watching.